Okay, good evening in Radio Nova Resistenza. We have um, here, welcome, uh, Abraham Weisfeld from Canada, Quebec. In, uh, he lives uh, in Montreal. And um, we can do a lot of, of, um, of questions uh, to him, uh, uh, writers, uh, journalists, activists, uh, and Jewish. Uh, uh for uh, for Palestine um it's a long, long presentation uh, but I I don't speak uh, about uh, all uh, uh, you have you have done in this uh, a long long time um it, this is a critical situation now in Gaza and Palestine uh, and uh, a process uh, all over the world for for Gaza for Palestine. Um, I, I I want to know, especially point of view of Abraham Weisfeld about uh, the situation of the protest and the Jewish uh, uh, front in, uh, in the protests in uh, USA and also in Canada, Canada, if he can, and uh, then uh, the what he think about the future of uh, Netanyahu, the, the government of is, Israel, and um, and the Gaza. So, mm. welcome. Mm. Good evening, uh, Abraham. Nice to meet you. Very good to meet you. Yes, uh, we have been in contact ever since I was working in Nablus, Palestine, some five years ago, when we were desperate for having some international uh, news reports because the regular mainstream media was all pro-Zionist. So your uh, uh, outlet, uh, Nova Resistenza, was crucial to the Palestinian voice being heard on the international scene. It's a very good work that you are doing. Congratulations there. Mm. I should say that uh, I'm also uh, a second generation Holocaust survivor. So I have the experience of my parents I know directly what a Holocaust is, and I will tell you that what the Zionists are preparing for the Palestinians in Gaza is a Holocaust, and one Holocaust does not justify another. And uh, they uh, pretend they are, you know, an ideology based upon myth and, and pretext and pretending, and they're pretending that the uh, Palestinians are the Nazis and that they are now fighting against the Nazis, when in fact, that during the Holocaust, the Zionists, they were not fighting the Nazis. It was my, my mother's uh, uh, political movement, the Jewish Bund, which was a Jewish socialist, a social democratic movement at the time that were fighting against the Nazis, like my mother's brother, who was a partisan in the uh, initial struggle, and, and then uh, conscripted into the Red Army. And it was the Red Army that defeated the Nazis while the Zionists ran away. And they even made a deal, you know, with the Nazis in Germany to get 60,000 of their members to be released by the Nazis while holding everybody else in preparation for being, um, being killed and burnt. And in uh, Hungary, the Zionists made another deal with the Nazis, with, with Eichmann, to have... 1,843 of their members released to go to Palestine. And uh, otherwise, you know, they did, had nothing to say, you know, not, nothing to say to the Jewish people about how they should be saving themselves or resisting in direct action. Nothing. The Zionists had nothing to say to oppose the Nazis at the time. And now they claim, you know, to be, you know, the, the vanguard of the, of the Jewish people and fighting, you know, for the defense of the Jewish people. It is just not true. Now they are fighting only for a colonial project, which serves the interests of the Jewish national bourgeoisie in collaboration with United States imperialism. And they're quite content, the United States, you know, to have a fascist regime, you know, that they can use and rely upon to protect their interests in the Western Orient like this. It's so sad, you know, that so many of uh, the Jewish people have been brainwashed into supporting this mercenary project, in which they're paid to go and fight and kill Palestinians, basically. So 
it's a very saddening situation, and our Jewish Bund is organized against it and has brought many of the uh, Jewish anti-Zionist uh, ideas back to the uh, new generations of the Jewish people who have been lied to, and now they know they have been lied to, and they will not tolerate being lied to by the Zionists, and so they have become anti-Zionists. But they don't know yet too much about the Jewish Bund, which was the first uh, anti-Zionist organization founded in 1897. And uh, most of our members, including the whole working class base you know, of, of the membership of our movement, which had 38,000 members at one time, and was the leading political party of the Jewish municipal elections in Poland and elsewhere in Eastern Europe, all of those people are lost. And they were annihilated, totally destroyed. And so the base of support to the Jewish Bund disappeared. The Zionists took over and claimed to be the vanguard of the Jewish National Liberation Movement. When in fact, they had done nothing to oppose the fascists in the first place. And yet, that is what uh, so many Jewish people have been taught in the Hebrew educational system, which was taken over by the... Uh, the Zionists, because they had the control over the money. So who controls the money controls, you know, who's going to be hired to be teaching in a, in a Hebrew school. <laughs> I've applied to teach in Jewish schools here in Montreal, even though I have a PhD in political science, I have a bachelor's of science in the, in the pure sciences as well. And I applied for such teaching positions and I get no reply whatsoever because I'm a Buddhist, I'm not a Zionist, and therefore I'm not allowed to speak. So the only place where I was able to speak and break through the censorship at the Jewish community campus here in Montreal was on the sidewalk in front of the building. So I set up a vigil, a Jewish Bund vigil. And I went there every Sunday and spoke to the people with a big banner saying no to the occupation in French. And uh, all the Zionists came and tried to convince me otherwise. And then I would have a chance you know, to speak with them there. And all of this is recorded in the body cam and uh, posted on my YouTube channel of Abraham Weisfeld. So it uh, shows you know, how to reply to the Zionist arguments. And that's a big problem because the um, Palestinian solidarity movement does not know how to answer the Zionists because the Zionists you know, claim to be a Jewish national liberation movement. And they you know, try to reply in a simple manner saying that Jewish people are not a nation. Well, it's not true. Jewish people are a nation, a Jewish people nation. But Marxism and a lot of the leftists don't understand this. They can all, because Marxism only sort of treated, you know, uh, states as nations, because they adopted the Hegelian definition of a nation. And Hegel was no revolutionary. I mean, he was a revolutionary for liberalism and for the national liberation movement of the German people against the Holy Roman Empire. Okay. And so they achieved their democracy and set up their nation state. And then every minority in the country was uh, treated as if we were invaders, foreigners, and, and uh, subversives, and traitors, and, and everything like this, and responsible for all the ills of the German nation. So finally, the Nazis came and used this as an excuse you know, to uh, 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 kill off uh, the Jewish people, the Roma people, the Sinti people, you know, any any people who did not conform to their pure definition of the nation were killed off. And the Zionists are adopting the same definition and they're implementing the same, you know, definition of, of what a nation is. And so they declared Israel to be a Jewish nation state, which it is not. And they used this as a reason to exclude uh, the Palestinians there. And uh, now they're using it as an excuse to genocide the Palestinians in Gaza because they resist. You know, any fascist will tell you, you know, you have no right to resist. <laughs> if you resist, you will die. So this is what they're doing, you know, just like any other fascist regime. And then they claim to be doing this in the name of the Jewish people. No. In 2006, I, I made a sign here in Montreal saying not in our name. Because that, that's the crucial issue. Are the Zionists acting and speaking in the name of the Jewish people or not? If they are, well, then people, you know, will tend to forgive them whatever they're doing. But if they don't represent the Jewish people, that makes all the difference in the world. Now, if we look at it empirically, we see that a majority of the Jewish people don't even live in the Zionist state in Palestine. 
the majority of the Jewish people live in the United States, Canada, South America, Berlin, Shanghai, whatever, you know, but not Israel. <laughs> and also, you know, Israel has always meant, you know, the name of the Jewish people, not the name of a state. And, uh, and, and when the Zionists shout at me, you know, Am Yisrael Chai, which, which means long live Israel, actually, what it, it does mean is long live the Jewish people. And so I reply to them, Hamadinet uh, Velo Yisrael, the state is not Israel. And the state is the Jewish people, not Israel. You know, if Israel was founded in 1948, does that mean the Jewish people didn't exist before that? No. <laughs> Even the Zionists will agree the Jewish people existed as a nation for 2,000 years before that without a state. But then all of a sudden they say, oh, only the state represents the Jewish people now. Really. You know, they're so contradictory in their in their doctrine. It's uh, it's totally irresponsible of them. You know, there's even more Jewish people who live in the United States of America, 7.4 million. And in Israel, there's only 7.2 million who live there. So, you know, like, where do they get off, you know, like, speaking on behalf of the Jewish people? American Jewish people don't have a vote in Israeli elections. Here in Quebec... Jewish people don't have a vote in the Israeli elections. And yet Netanyahu goes to the United Nations and says that he's speaking on behalf of the Jewish people. Well, if he's speaking on behalf of the Jewish people, he's speaking as a dictator because he has no votes from the majority of the Jewish people to justify such a claim. And there you go. Yeah, yeah. Also in Italy, there are a big population uh, of Jewish people. So Italy. also in Italy. Italy, I saw a report that scared me. I saw a report of two fascist demonstrations in Italy, one in which they were using a Hitler salute. I don't know why, Hitler is dead. <laughs> a thousand of them making a Hitler salute all at the same time. You know, I don't know which uh, city it was in. And then another one, another demonstration elsewhere, some political party you know, was uh, su supporting Mussolini. <laughs> uh, another thousand somewhere. So that's very dangerous. Yeah, in Italy, the, there is a special situation uh, uh, for uh, a political um, uh, situation in Italy uh, with uh, the party to the government now is uh, it, it always stand uh, for a Zionist section of the um, not the same at uh, 10 or 20 years ago. Now it's worse, uh, very worse, mm. the situation in Italy, especially in Italy. In Europe, all Europe is like the same, but in Italy in special mode because uh, the government is now under um, a party on the uh, extremely right uh, side. Mm. So... Uh, I'm uh, very um, sad for this and uh, also for the war situation uh, in uh, Gaza, in Palestine, in Ukraine. Uh, it, it's very uh, a, a bad uh, a bad way. We have, we have inside a very bad way. Mm -hmm. now. Yes, uh, yeah. the West is using its military power to the maximum now because yeah yeah because they know that the only thing they have left is the military power to fight back with you know because they're losing the economic front in the uh free enterprise uh with uh china and yeah. uh, uh politically there the united states has become isolated even in the united nations and they're even losing uh support from europe uh, because europe uh, doesn't win uh is not interested in continuing to being manipulated uh, by the United States for the U.S. interests uh, as well. So it seems like uh, the military option is the option that is uh, being adopted by the West because they have no other power, no political power, like the, the colored revolutions uh, have not worked out for them as they had hoped. And uh, the revolutions that are taking place now are, are real revolutions, as in Africa. So, yeah. yes. this is the time. About, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, and what what do you think about the future in um, in Gaza and Palestine? Because uh, as you know, Netanyahu is in a very critical situation now because uh, uh, the international court uh, uh, done uh, in, uh, in, 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 international court of justice. The court of justice, yes, and so Rafa. Uh, he can't move because uh, uh, the, the international community uh, can't uh, you can lose the uh, allow of international community so what do you think uh, is going is going on this, this situation um the international international court of justice um will come down with a recommendation to the uh general assembly of the united nations in a decision and and most likely they will recommend that sanctions be imposed upon the zionist state because they're committing genocide and even you know proclaiming that they're committing genocide and saying that they have a right to commit genocide because of the Nazi Holocaust, somehow they connected two together. So uh, then in the United Nations General Assembly, there could be a decision to suspend Israel from the General Assembly. And at the same time, they could vote to recognize Palestine as a full member of the General Assembly while suspending the Zionist state. This would be a revolutionary change upon the recommendation of the International Court of Justice. And then though the politicians though, these the Zionist politicians domestically inside, they are not in danger because they have they still have the support of 68% of the Israeli population. So they think that they can continue to doing to do what they were doing, even though the UN and the International Court of Justice says otherwise. They don't care. So the International Criminal Court can then step in and impose sanctions on the individual Zionist politicians to declare them to be criminals. And then that would have some effect as well. But otherwise, the problem is that the Israeli Jewish population has been so brainwashed by the Zionist educational system, that they're willing to go ahead with the attack on Rafah. And I think the deal that they made with the United States was that they would limit their attack on Iran in, a, in exchange for U.S. approval for uh, the Zionist military's attack upon Rafah. What they have planned for Rafah would seem to be like this. They've just gotten um, 30,000, 40,000 tents. So they intend to set up some sort of a concentration camp somewhere, perhaps even in Egypt. I think Egypt has even began to set up barriers to make a prison. And what uh, the Zionists want to do is to take the men, the military-age men from Rafah, separate them from their families, and put them into some sort of concentration camp, either in part of Gaza or in part of Egypt away from their families, away from Hamas, away from any um, military support that they get to defend them from Hamas. So then they could, uh, anything could happen to them, you know, in such a camp. And then once the men are separated from their families, then anything can happen to their families, just as what happened in Sabra Shetila refugee camps in 1982, when the PLO fighters were sent to Tunisia United States said that they would guarantee the security of the refugees, and they didn't. General Sharon sent in the phalanges, the Lebanese, Lebanese fascists, crusaders, and they killed 3,000 Palestinians in three days, silently, with knives, while being surrounded, and the Palestinians weren't allowed outside to leave the camps uh, by the Zionist military encirclement. And... Uh, they went ahead and they killed 3,000 Palestinians just like that. And they could do the same. 
and they can use the excuse that they were resisting. And, you know, resisting means going to find food, uh, anything, anything that they define as resistance, you know, can be used as an excuse to kill as many Palestinians as possible. And then they were hoping that the Palestinians would leave to go to some other countries. And they were, they were asking other countries, they call the Palestinians away. But no other countries want to have Palestinian revolu revolutionaries coming into their countries. Europe will not accept Palestinian refugees. And all the Arab countries have a uh, saturation of, of Palestinian refugees. There's 2 million Palestinian refugees in Jordan. Jordan will not accept refugees. Egypt will not accept refugees because they're afraid of the Palestinian refugees because they're revolutionaries. And they would overthrow the Egyptian military pro-Zionist regime, of course. Uh, Iraq, Syria each have about a million Palestinian refugees. Lebanon has about a million and a half Palestinian refugees. They cannot accept anymore. So no country will accept Palestinian refugees. And the Zionists use this as an excuse to say that they can get rid of the Palestinian refugees by other means. I saw one Palestinian uh, uh, Zionist, uh, uh, Israeli uh, uh, Zionist saying, oh, no other country will accept them? Okay, well, we will deal with them. They, were, you know, they intend to kill the Palestinian refugees in order to get rid of them if they cannot be sent off somewhere else. Who knows, though, what the United States has plans for, you know, refugees in the new wharf uh, that they're building there in order to bring in uh, food aid, supposedly. So they could also use this wharf for Palestinians who want to leave and get away from the murder that they're being subjected to. So what would the United States do? They would collect all these Palestinian refugees. Who knows what they would do with them? Probably, you know, put them into some isolation on, a, on an island somewhere where they couldn't do anything under the control of the U.S. military. This is, you know, the prospects, if they can get away with what they're doing. But the international intifada, which is happening, an international revolution against Zionism, against United States imperialism could stop them. Could actually yeah. stop them. You know, it's Against becoming this. a movement so strong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Against the imperialism in all over the world, uh, a big power. And also, I want to talk with you uh, only other five minutes uh, of two things. One uh, uh, about the West Bank, because uh, also in West Bank there are settlers, violent settlers, and uh, uh, sometime uh, speaking with some people in Palestine, uh, I I fear that uh, the same uh, things happening in Gaza can happen also in, uh, in West Bank, and uh, with the, the settlers we. Uh, the IOF, uh, and uh, many people are very uh, fear yeah, mm. of these. Um, um, yeah, I'm very sad for all these, these things. The in, second, the West Bank, in the West Bank, the uh, uh, repression of the Palestinians has already begun on a, on a scale that is uh, much bigger than it was before. Uh, what's yeah. happening in the West Bank is 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 much like the uh, occupation by the uh, Zionist military in Gaza, in Gaza, and uh, the um, minister, uh, deputy minister of defense, so called Ben Giver, is handing out automatic uh, rifles to the settlers now, and he's setting up what's called a national guard, which is a fascist militia. So before the set. The settlers or the squatters, as I call them, um, they would go and attack Palestinians, Palestinian villages, Palestinian farmers, trying to force the Palestinian villages to, to, to give up and uh, abandon and leave their villages and go into the cities. And they used to come with sticks and stones and attack the Palestinians when they went to do their uh, harvesting of olive trees and such. Now they have other automatic rifles and they can attack the Palestinians and kill Palestinians. And uh, this is tolerated, accepted by the military occupation because they don't want to get into a fight, you know, with these, with the squatters 
because they are, you know, Israeli citizens. So, and also the military is not uh, as effective as it used to be in, in stopping the, the squatters because uh, when the uh, local squatters were conscripted into the military, they would serve in the military in the same areas in which they were, they had, you know, their fascist friends in. So they would be connected and they would support you know, the, the squatters, when they went to attack and, and, and not to stop them, even though they're supposed to be working for coexistence in the uh, military occupation of the West Bank, that's called Kogat. And uh, and they would support them because they're their friends. Before, they, the when the settlers and the squatters, you know, were conscripted into the military, they were sent to some other section of the country where they would they didn't have, you know, their fascist friends. And uh, but now they do. They're allowed to do though, to do so. So it's very dangerous for the Palestinians in the West Bank. Yeah, and they have yeah. to resist. They have no choice but to resist. Otherwise, they will be expelled. Okay, okay. You have 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 you got some uh, news about uh, Tower Forum uh, and uh, uh, our friends, Toto Youssef? I don't speak. Uh, I didn't speak for a long time with him. Ah, uh, Dr. Yusuf, well, are all well, and yeah. uh, uh, Tanweer uh, Forum is 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 functioning. They have had no other attacks in 2015. Yeah. The military made an attack on Tanweer Forum, the cultural center in Nablus, and uh, they stole all the um, hard drives from the computer room, the Rochelle Corey yeah, computer yeah, yeah. room that I had set up. But uh, you know, I went there and. Uh, I, I set up residence inside the Tanweer Forum so that the military yeah, yeah, could I not remember. come back. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, I remember when you when you sleep. I was in, sleeping in the I, office there. Uh, yes, the Tanweer Forum in Nablus. Yeah. I so remember. if the military wanted to come back, you know, they would have to yeah, deal yeah. with me, and they cannot deal with me because I'm second generation Holocaust survivor. Yeah, and I, I'm very Jewish, you know. And if they want to attack me and arrest me for supporting the Palestinians. Then I think that a lot of people would hear about this, and they don't want a lot of people to hear about this. They want to censor me. They don't want to promote me. So mm -hmm. it worked, and they and we reform has not been attacked since yeah, 2015. Yeah, 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 that was good. Yeah. And uh, last last uh, question is: um, as I, I want to ask you for the book. You have right about the the solution. Uh, mm. You you said. Uh, uh, about uh, one one state solution, two state solution, and the solution for the f refugees in yes. uh, Palestine. Uh, yes. Can you talk only for three minutes about this, if you can? And yes. I uh, uh, I want to have this book as a buy this book, to, and I like I I also glad to translate it if if uh, it's possible. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. So. Um, while I was in Nablus, and uh, I, I lived in Nablus and worked with the Palestinian Popular Resistance uh, Committees for five months of a time, for year after year, for a number of years, until the pandemic. And I wrote a book while I was there because I was listening to the Palestinians, what they're saying to me. I would ask them, you know, like how, how to, how they thought that they could live with the, um, the Jewish Israelis, and uh, there was very positive response, and I put it all together, and I explained, you know, what uh, the Jewish position would be in terms of wanting to live together with the Palestinians, and I wrote this book uh, with the title, The Federation of Palestinian and Hebrew Nations, in which there is no Israel. They are, okay, a Hebrew nation, the Jewish Israelis now, they have their own culture, they have their own language, they have their own um, uh, political system, uh, everything. So they exist, okay. And only 17% of the Jewish Israelis have passports to go to any other country. And uh, another country would not be happy to receive a lot of Jewish refugees, uh, just as they would not be happy to receive a lot of Palestinian refugees. Because for Europe and... and uh, and the Western countries, refugees are a problem 
in any case, because they don't care about refugees. So the solution then has to include, though, the Palestinian refugees who are outside of Palestine, 5.7 registered refugees according to UNRWA. Now, the two-state solution does not talk about the right of return of the Palestinian refugees. The one-state solution, even, does not talk about the right of return of the Palestinian refugees. And there is no way to resolve the problem, the question of the Palestinian refugees, if there was a one state even, you know, because the populations of the Palestinians and the Jewish Israelis would be about even, 50-50. So he who is going to claim a majority, you know, in favor of the right of return of the Palestinian refugees or to refuse the right of return of the Palestinian refugees, each could claim a majority. And probably the Jewish Israelis, you know, if it was a one state, you know, when there was an election, they would manip manipulate the election to their favor. And of course, they would oppose the return of the refugees. It doesn't work and would most likely lead to a civil war between the two, because each would try to control the state, the centralized state, as happened in Rwanda and Burundi, in which each uh, majority of people in, in those countries were trying to eliminate the minority in order to maintain the majority status. This is what the nation state creates. It creates a fascist mentality in which the dominant nation seeks to rid itself of the uh, subordinate nation. So there has to be a federation. This is a constitutional proposal, which has been uh, printed in English, is available in digital format. We're downloading for free on academia.edu at my page of uh, Abraham Weisfeld, W-E-I-Z-F-E-L-D. And uh, it has been translated into Arabic in Jordan and has been uh, brought into uh, Palestine and circulating in Palestine now. There's also another Arabic edition which is going to be printed up in Algeria now, I hear recently. So uh, for sure, it should be print, uh, translated and printed in, in Italian as well because there is no other solution for the Palestinian refugees but a solution which is a federation in which each people have their own government and then they set up a common council to regulate the... Uh, affairs of the uh, territory as a whole. And this is just, very just, you know, because in Judaism, the prophet Samuel, he said that we are not a nation like other nations. We, we are a people nation. We do not have a king. We do not have a state. And we do not want to have a state because we want to live as a people together with the other people in the same country of Canaan at the time. And uh, it broke down because the people just as in, in, in the desert with Moses, you know, wanted the golden calf. Now they want another golden calf, which is a state. And they think that this is something which will benefit them and give them power. And they think that power is security and power is national self-determination. And they are mistaken. And the events of the past 75 years have proven that Zionism is just another fascist trap. And this time it's a trap for the Jewish people, which is hurting the Jewish people as much as it is hurting the Palestinian people. Yeah. Oh, uh, I think uh, it's a very important point of view. This and for oh, for this moment is a very important. Uh, I thank you very much to you, and I'm very glad, very happy to see you again. And uh, I give you best wishes for your health, uh, for your back, for your legs, <laughs> and for knees, knees, both and, knees. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And no. thank you, thank you very much, thank you very much. I um, uh, hope you listen uh, soon, this new soon for your book, and uh, send me the links. And thank you uh, from me, from uh, Radio Nova Resistenza, all the staff, and see you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marco. And so, and um, I, I ask you if you can, because I record also the audio phone, not the, uh, not the video. Uh, if you send me also, the video 
if uh, you have sure record or also the video i record uh, only audio and if you record video and you can uh, send me i'm very happy so i put it yes. on uh, my channel okay we have both video and audio recording here okay, okay, two, okay. two different files as well okay everything that's is organized. good that's okay, good that's good. good okay bye okay. for now see you okay. soon bye bye see you soon